evening. This is Deborah Sundale from the United States and she's an expert already for more than 30 years on female sexuality and her main subject has been uh, female ejaculation and the female G-spot, the female prostate. Um, what was interesting about her work is that she really brought it to a larger public in America that she also acted like a sex educator. So really educated women about their sexuality and their G-spot and what is the deeper meaning of the G-spot as almost your erotic soul. Um, now she's developing a new program which is called a G-spot meditation. She's working with a lot of women to gather their experiences and to get the information uh, that comes out of it. Um, Deborah has been in a feminist uh, surrounding in the 80s. That is also uh, her studies, sociology and feminism. Um, and well, she's a very uh, important lecturer for many people. She travels around the world and also in Europe to, to talk about this subject. And I'm happy that you're here. And it's wonderful to be here. I love being here. Thank you for having me. Yes. Um, tonight you have been teaching your lecture and after that we did an exercise. Um, after so many years uh, being an expert on the subject, what would you like to share with the audience? What is the most important about studying uh, the meaning and the effects of G-spot uh, stimulation, meditation for women and couples? The most important effects is that the G-spot has the potential to take you into an erotic interior life. And in our busy modern world, um, we're focused on the externals, the sex mm -hmm. toys and the techniques and the to-do list of performance things that we have to learn, one of which is ejaculating. Um, and this says stop to all that. Let's uh, go inside. Let's do connect with ourselves on a deeper, soulful level. Um, why we're here, what we're meant to do, how our sexuality interfaces with that. And is it that we get to know e e ourselves better if we work with the G-spot? Or is it that we expand our sexual expression or both? What, what, is this, what is the effect? Yeah, it's really both because the G-spot meditation really does connect you with what I call, you know, your erotic soul. Mm. I'm sure I'm not the first to say that. I, Eros, you know. Um, what does that look like? What does she want? You know, she has a voice. It's, it's truly amazing and it's beautiful to have developed that relationship in that way with your interior self via the G-spot. And then the other part that you mentioned about the expansion, mm -hmm. most definitely, I mean, that is the result is, is a, a, a greater expansion of your connection with self and partner, uh, with your inner self, your knowledge, your awareness of your erotic being and how you communicate that and how you go into communion really, you know, with your partner. Wonderful. Nowadays we see a lot of talks and also writings and, and films about the G-spot which are very commercial yeah and where women are almost forced to ejaculate like if you don't you're not a real woman or men require from them or from their partner to ejaculate how do you see that as an expert in this field that it is exploited that way or presented it is an exploitation and frankly today this year, 2015, I'm starting to see it as a backlash, really. Backlash being defined as aggressive, as taking something that had a momentum for the good 
and kind of twisting it and bringing it back into an exploitive kind of darker place. And this is being done by the way we're treating the G-spot, which is roughly to make it squirt out in a very ugly and cruel way. Um, it's being done by uh, scientists who are not sexologists, who have no training in sexology, thinking suddenly because they're a urologist or something they can delve into the world of sexology and have something good to say when they themselves personally have not gone through that training and therefore are perhaps not even aware of them their own sexual life kind of we put old um, Western views of sexuality onto our science studies without awareness it's very easy to do that in the sexuality field because of the repression that sexuality has had so right now today I'm starting to see it as more of a backlash that's happening Hmm. And that shouldn't happen because really women should own this and yeah. work with this and yeah. enjoy this. And yeah. Yes, and as a, with a feminist background, I can see that, that clearly. You know, this is clear. This is what feminism is about, is owning our own body and knowing when someone else is starting to take it over for us. Mm -hmm. So that's clearly what's happening here. Yeah. It's taking the power away from women. Uh, treat yourself roughly. Um, no, you don't ejaculate its urine um, by males who haven't studied sexology, even though they're scientists. That is a backlash. That's how you define a black backlash. Hmm. And how should we then proceed with it? What would be a good way as women to claim it and in a way that it really makes us happy, that it expands our life, our experience? Right that we are empowered by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's to continue what women have been doing really now for the last 15 years is to get a good book on female ejaculation and the G-spot um, and spend the time with yourself knowing your own body because that level of knowledge is the truth. So and really you phenomenological, by the body, that's embodied. Right. That's yeah. right, by the body, embodied, you said? Yeah. yeah, no kidding. Because that is the truth, that's your, what, ground, grounding your reality. And so then it won't matter who's saying what. And also share our stories with yeah. other women with our partners, our loved ones? Yes, there is a big goddess movement happening in a younger generation and that's all about sharing mm -hmm. stories, the red tent, being with women, being with your girlfriends, talking about sexuality, talking about your body, exploring, pushing your boundaries a little bit. It's very exciting, especially with your friends, developing trust around being able to talk freely about sexuality. Definitely. Hmm. Tradition that goes back forever, mm -hmm. women together. Mm -hmm. Because this, this phenomena of female ejaculation was also described in very old texts, mm -hmm. like in tantric texts as Amrita, but you mm -hmm. also mentioned, mentioned in your lecture some other cultures. Could you talk a bit about that, about the history of, of this phenomena and how it was uh, treated and, and respected in, in the old ages? The Greeks knew about female ejaculation. They didn't debate its existence. They debated its properties and its function. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they believed it contained an essence important for reproduction. So that's very honoring. Um, Shogun, the, the uh, Shunga artists in Japan, 16th century, loved the erotic, very prolific, knew all about female ejaculation and believed that it was important for, for immortality. 
you know, that whoever got ejaculation all over themselves was honored. Um, yeah, Polynesian cultures uh, were studied in the 30s by famous anthropologists and they were ejaculating before intercourse, bringing to mind what the Greeks knew or that there was something important in there for reproduction. So we know that Native American cultures, Celtic cultures, all knew about female ejaculation. So it has had a very ancient history and, and one that was far more respected and honored than we, we have today, at least under this backlash. But women themselves who have learned to ejaculate totally honor it, completely know what it means for them. And if they don't, they will, they will find out because mm. by nature, ejaculation, female ejaculation will bring you closer to your, to your authentic feminine self. Hmm. And do all women have a G-spot? All women have a G-spot because the G-spot is the female prostate. All men have a prostate believe me all women have a prostate and it's fully functioning and overflowing with female ejaculate mm. so it's not urine no pee because many women think they're gonna pee and it's not the urge to ejaculate feels like the urge to pee okay but it's not it's ejaculate if you are aroused sexually aroused and you feel that urge to pee that is ejaculation knocking on the door and it wants out. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. And how do you feel, I mean, we now started in 2013, officially we opened an institute where we reconnect erotology and sexuality as a science. And we look at it as a holistic thing, so integral. Um, and also we study old cultures to see and other cultures to see how the people there relate to kind of subjects. How do you feel about this initiative? And how do you feel teaching here in such yes. a surrounding? To relate sexology and... Erotology. Erotology. So the art and science of love. Oh. To reconnect that. Yeah, that's where we're headed. Um, that's where we're headed. With this emerging of sexuality out of very, very dark days that really were grounded in religious oppression um, from the Catholic Church during the times of the Inquisition. There was just um, an unspeakable, brutal onslaught against the erotic body and specifically the female body. And so this, we are in an era where all that is it's not being challenged even, it's just falling away. And really a, a divine approach and outlook to femininity is upon us. Mm -hmm. And um, therefore going back to seeing how sex was, sexuality was honored around the world in ancient times in all the religions of the world and reinvigorating our Western mm -hmm. uh, spirituality, which is Christian in general, is, uh, is, it, is exciting. And I mean, you know, your school is leading the way with that. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> but we're leading because these wonderful teachers come <laughs> from everywhere yeah. and just teach their, their knowledge, which they have built after 30 years. What would you like to share with a world audience? What is important? What is important? What comes deep out of you talking about this? Oh boy, I mean, it is about femininity, its inherent nature, um, is, is the love of femininity and its sexual nature, which is not only passionate and fun-loving and wild and exploratory, but, you know, as well as nurturing 
loving, connecting, yes, expanding. How could this consciousness that's growing about femininity and empowering the feminine help the world of today? Because there is a lot of problems in the world in men. If you look at war and you know power, how could it support? It supports because it nurtures the, the masculine. And it nurtures it in a balanced way. I mean, when you have a repressed femininity, you have the opposite, which is an out of control masculinity, which is because of its huge energy, um, can really turn, you know, violent and out of control. And so, Really, it tames and kind of contains this masculinity so that it can do what it's really meant to do, which is connect us and shepherd us to a higher consciousness uh, that's connected to the divine. And men lead that way. And women, with our femininity, you know, we provide kind of the earthy energy for that if you will and like a container because a woman nurtures mm -hmm. um, but she nurtures uh, in a certain way that a man can really express himself but not to but only if she's respected yeah and she has power and she knows her power and she knows how to utilize that and a man is conscious enough to understand what's going on and, and engages there instead of ignoring her, putting her in a freaking cloth, excuse my French, and then acting absolutely out of control, you know, and hurting everyone. This is my opinion. That's deep, right? Yeah, I think so. So sexuality is at the root of our society, at the root of how we raise our children, how we educate, how we balance powerful elements in a society, you would say, or not? Yes, I? I would say, because you know, ancient cultures believe that sex is, our sexual energy is our life force energy, that's our energy as humans that we're alive so you can't get any more um, at the source than that <laughs> so it is it is important that we clean up this muck that's been covered out that has covered over our beautiful beautiful sexuality it, it we have to get clean it off and it's a jewel you know, and bring it out of the mud, clean it off, look at the beauty and the, and the knowledge, the deep knowledge that it has to offer us. It, it, is, it is the healing that this planet and uh, the humans on this planet need. It has, it has been buried. It's been shamed. It's been covered up. And we're brushing it off. It's arising because the time has come. And where will it end? What is your vision of the future? You too can do this and more. Who said that? It was Jesus, right? He said this. You too can do this and more. He was telling us something about who we are and what we're capable of being as human beings, much, much more. We create our own hell here, right now, look around. And we don't have to live that way. And he showed us over and over and over how to do it. And so we're just learning now to listen and follow that example. I mean, that to me is the 
it. Future path. Yeah, the path. Yeah. And so, pure natural sexuality transcends into love. Mm. Universal love. Yes, it yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, it does. Mm. That's how you get there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You can talk about it all day long and try and try and try, but as long as you have a sexuality that's foul, you're not going to get very far. Mm. So beautiful. Yes, <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for having but this your teaching. Yeah. venue to yeah. grow and share. Of course.